So I've been watching And Just Like That, the Sex and the City sequel. Yeah, I watched Sex and the City. What's so weird about it? And it has a lot of issues, but that's not what we're going to get into today. So because the sequel isn't very good, no Samantha Jones, i.e. the true main character of Sex and the City, I decided to go back and re-watch the first few seasons of Sex and the City. I first watched it when I was a teenager, 16, 17 or so. So now re-watching it as an adult, I've just noticed something. And that is that Carrie Bradshaw is the worst. I mean, I probably noticed that she makes everything about herself when I was a teenager, but in particular, her relationship with Big in the first two bordering three seasons is what I'm going to get into today. Because I feel like we're really sold this idea of, oh, Carrie was just a woman who had so much love to give to Big, and Big was this emotionally unavailable, awful, narcissistic, blah, 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 blah. But rewatching the first few seasons, I don't think that adds up in the slightest, and I'm going to explain to you why. So firstly, some context about the characters, though if you've clicked on this video, I assume you know who I'm on about. Carrie Bradshaw, the sex columnist, who writes one column a week and yet can afford all those shoes. And Big, the, um, finance? Question mark? Some type of Wall Street dude maybe oh, i don't know she's in her mid 30s and she's this wild party well not is she wild yeah yeah yeah. she likes to party she's this party girl and she's looking for love looking for mr right whatever and big is in his 40s a divorcee introverted right so there's some key differences can i do a video sometime about the romanticization of introvertism on the internet because I listened to the Huberman Lab podcast the other day and introvert and extrovert doesn't have anything to do with how quiet or how loud you are. It's about how much dopamine satiates you from social interaction. So someone who's extroverted can be quite quiet, but they need more social interaction with others to hit the same dopamine like sweet spot <laughs> that an introverted person. An introverted person gets more dopamine from less interaction and an extrovert needs more for like the same level. Very little to do with, oh my God, I'm just so quiet and I love books, it's because I'm extroverted. But there is a roman, this is what the video is about. There is a romanticization of introverts on the internet where it's like, oh, all extroverts are just the worst. They're going around screaming, being attention seekers. No, those people are just assholes. Like anyway, another time maybe. Straight off the bat, they meet. Carrie Bradshaw is very much World War Me about anything. So she's very dramatic. She has a flair for the drama. They meet, they do some dating. Carrie thinks that they're dating exclusively, even though they never had that chat. And then she catches Big on a date with another woman. And then all her girl mates are like, oh, what a cheater, what a scumbag, blah, 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 right? So you're meant to think, ooh, playboy, ooh. I mean, with dating, modern day dating, and this was back in the 90s, communication, is key. They hadn't had that discussion yet of shall we be exclusive. And in that same episode, when Carrie's upset, she calls him at something like three in the morning. He goes from a party to meet her in the middle of a park where she's like, can you just stand still with me? We like each other, let's just stand still together. And then they're exclusive from that moment there. That is not someone who has commitment issues. He went to meet her at 3 a.m. in a park to agree to be exclusive with her. That doesn't sound emotionally unavailable to me. I might get the timeline confused a little bit here. But so they date for several months. And then one day she sees him come outside of a church with an older woman who's his mother. And she talks to him being like, hey, maybe I could come sometime and meet your mum. And he says, this is just a me and my mother thing. So no, not yet, whatever. She then, because she's insane, takes it upon herself to go to the church the next Sunday anyway to hide in a pew so she can spy on Big and his mum. But of course she knocks a book to the floor which alerts him to her being there. So then she feels like she has to go say hi to him afterwards because otherwise it would be weird if she just ran away even though it's weird that she turned up in the first place. And he introduces her to his mother. His mother hasn't doesn't know that, you know, her son has a girlfriend. Um, and Carrie takes this as, oh my God, he's not even told his mum about me and we've been dating a few months. Like he's not 16 and he's not 20. He's a 40 plus year old divorcee who 
wants to take things slowly because he's a divorcee and he's older. He just wants to, he likes to take things slowly. So then he invites her to go on a holiday, right? And that's not like, I guess it is kind of placating someone, but it's also showing, look, well, we're ready to take this step. Let's go on a holiday together for the first time. Cause that can be a step for a couple, you know, cause you're dealing with the stress of traveling and you're gonna see how like you managed to interact with your other half when you're in those sort of like stressful environments, yada, yada, yada. So that that's like extending an olive branch. Yeah, I'm not keen on you mating my mum just yet, but which, God. And then Carrie decides to have some sort of meltdown and goes, I can't do this. I need to know that I'm the one. And he's like, because he's a divorcee. He's gonna want to take things slow. He already did think he met the one and that fucked up. Well, I think he cheated on her, but whatever. He's just kind of like, um, and she breaks up with him over that. She has a tantrum. And then we start with the whole, he's emotionally unavailable. He's this and that and the other. Some point during season two, they decide to get back together. They still have terrible communication issues because Carrie won't say anything when she's annoyed about, so she just won't tell because she's not honest. And then she waits till it bubbles up and then she explodes. So he thinks that he's dating some sort of ticking time bomb all of the time. Cause that's how it would seem if someone doesn't communicate with you, the issues they're having with whatever dynamic you've got going on and they just bottle it up and then explode. The other person's gonna think, what the fuck? <laughs> so they start dating again and he tries in his own way. He ums and ahs about meeting her friends, but then he does end up going to meet her friends. So that's a positive sign. He's, he's just this older dude who's a little bit shy and wants to take things slow. And there's this one episode in particular that I never really see being brought up where they go to a party together. Carrie's immediately being bitchy. It's one of big sort of upper society friends. This woman having this party and Carrie knows one of the waiters and then she and the waiter go off because they get caught in a compromising position. And Big is naturally like, is it true that you were just giving a blow? You're my girlfriend, committed relationship. Is it true that you were just giving a blow job to the waiter on the balcony? And Carrie's like, he's not a waiter, he's a performing artist. As if that, that okay, that's not the issue here. The issue isn't uh, in this little, little instance, yeah? Just ignore the bigger picture. The little picture here right now is um, not a classism issue. It's you're in a relationship were you just giving a blowjob to a waiter on a balcony? And she's like, I'm insulted you even asked that question. She could have just said, no, he was showing me his tattoo. But even then, when she was looking at his tattoo, she was being very flirty about it. Very, very a bit cheaty there. So she goes off with the waiter and then they snog, right? So she's cheated on Big. They snog, they go back to hers. She wakes up the next day. They didn't have sex, but then Big rings her to be like, look, Carrie, I'm sorry, of course I love you, I fucking love you, blah, blah, blah. And Carrie's just like, and then it ends with her saying, <laughs> I'm just laughing, so I just, God, imagine if I applied this, this memory to anything other than this. She says, I never told Big about what happened with the waiter. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't count until you say I love you. What? In a relationship, if you think certain things don't count as cheating or don't love, you have to make sure that your partner is on the same page because everyone has slightly different boundaries and ideas as to what constitutes as cheating or as normal behavior in a relationship. You have to openly communicate. So if you think, oh, a few snogs before they say I love you is fine. Well, you've got to be fine with them also thinking and doing the same thing. And if you both communicate that and you're both fine a bit, more power to you. But she's being inherently unfair. She's keeping it from him because she knows that she fucked up. She knows that she cheated on him. So already we've got her being a stalker, her randomly dumping him because she was just being OTT and dramatic and she's cheated on him. But sure, tell me again how big was the main arsehole in the first two seasons. Also, funny how later on in around season three, when she first cheats on Aiden with Big, she tells Sam and Sam says, oh, you know, I mean, he's not said I love you yet, so it's fine. And then Carrie's like, what kind of morality is that? Or, or to some effect, the same uh, moral barometer that you had in season two, you nitwit. How are these writers got two second memories? I know how, it's because when 
producing these shows, there's a lot of time. Whereas if you're sitting there and you can binge it all in one go, you're going to notice the inconsistencies, whatever. So anyway, their relationship progresses. Big gets a job opportunity in Paris. Carrie is at first mad that he didn't say anything sooner because he wasn't sure of the actual details or if it was even gonna go through. And then she decides that she wants to go. But he's like, you need to be going for you. You can't just be going just because of me. And which is a fairly normal thing to say, right? Because if you're moving, they're, they're in America, they're in New York. And if you're moving all the way to Paris, across the seas, yeah, and you're just with one other person and you don't have anything of your own to look forward to, if you're going to an entirely new country where you don't know anyone, you've got no friends there. And this was in the 90s. Twitter wasn't a thing. Instagram wasn't a thing. It was harder to like meet up with random people across the world. If you're in that situation, you've gone just because you want to be with the other person, it could breed resentment. You know, you're bored, you're missing your home, you're missing your New York style pizza, you're missing your friends. What job is she even going to do out there? She's a sex columnist for a New York newspaper. So she's a minor celebrity in New York. Paris wouldn't have heard of her. What's she even gonna be doing over there for six months or 10 months? She would need to find a reason for her to go and be happy because otherwise she'd be, she'd probably be staying in like a flat by herself all day, waiting for him to come home. And it would just breed resentment, right? So he's got the right idea of, well, you need to go for you as well. And she's like, oh, it's just throwing food around. It's like, okay. <laughs> And then it's kind of vague as to who broke up with who because I think they have sex one more time and she's like, that morning I knew that it was over. Blah, 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 blah. So it's pretty vague. My money's on her just like dumping him again because she doesn't want to deal. Now, here's the thing that I think some people don't pick up on. <sighs> Big when in Paris, then meets Natasha who's 26 and he's 40 something. So that's iffy to begin with, but Let's give them the benefit of the doubt on the old age thing. He then, with this relationship with, with Natasha, does the opposite of what he does with Carrie. He rushes everything. They rush into marriage and what happens, he cheats on her and it all falls apart. Because he rushed the relationship. I mean, they probably weren't like right for each other anyway, but they rushed the relationship. What he didn't want to do with Carrie, he does with Natasha and it all ends tits up. Later on in the last season, Carrie goes to Paris with they just call him the Russian, which is kind of rude, right? Like he's more than his nationality. I can't remember, so hold on. She goes to Paris with Alexander Petrovsky and it's a parallel from what would have happened in season two. Cause she's not going for herself. She's going for a boyfriend. She's bored. She has nothing to, and it goes tits up as well. And she ends up dumping him and going back to big. So there are parallels, right? I just don't, and this is only like the first turn. I mean, as soon as they started like cheating on their respective partners with each other and then all the other crap. I'm not interested in that. That's not the topic of this video. The topic of this video is he was emotionally unavailable. He was the asshole. He has his faults. He has a lot of flaws. I think she was like, they both can't communicate, but I think Carrie gets given the benefit of the doubt so much more from the first two or so seasons. She was dramatic as fuck and he still wanted to pull up with her. That's more than I could do. That's all for this video. Let me know what you think. Should I do a video talking about why and just like that is, um, <laughs> well, let me know in the comments below. Remember to like, dislike, comment the engagement, subscribe, and subscribe to my podcast channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.